This might be the Vanuatu that you'd be expecting to see in a tourist brochure. The view from Uriki Island Resort back to Port Vila, Blue Lagoon, and white sandy beaches, coral reef, beautiful sunsets. But this is the village, Seaside Tongua. This is where we've been doing our latest project. Take a look at the corrugated iron. The alleyways between the houses. Typical of the conditions that they live in. Life's a little bit more simple. Basic cooking on open fire, only metres away from our project. The harvesting of coconut and the cutting up of the taro root. A game of cricket with a bat made from a piece of timber salvaged from the job site. The simplicity of girls jumping elastic. It's a typical island lifestyle. They seem to lack the motivation and drive that seems typical to Westerners. But they're a beautiful and accepting people. It's a very safe environment. Well, we are here to work. It is a building project. So with the help of the tradies that actually know what they're doing, complemented by the labourers with less skills in that area. There's Gruy on the roller, helping them erect the framework. Rocky, who knows more about media than I do. Trevor, the pharmacist from uh, Carindale. There's the old toilet and shower block being replaced by the new. And here's where I come in. Pretty typical look, open sores, festering. Here's a deep one that needed lancing under local anaesthetic. So then there's the fun bit, like the Vanuatu versus Australia bubblegum blowing competition. Vanuatu won, of course. <laughs> And there is enough downtime for things like snorkeling and fishing and surfing. There's nothing better than at the end of the day to relax and unwind and let the cares of the world just melt away. and some of the crew, ordinary and extraordinary. Uh, what I got out of it was the fact that I've got to be happy for what I have got, not what I haven't got. That's what I get out of going to Vanuatu. The locals really appreciate the work that we do for them. They um, show that with cuddles and kindness and thanks and, and appreciation, and that's one of the things that makes it really special to go there and actually give of your time. Out of the trips, I really 
get a satisfaction that um, we have given something to someone that is in real need. Um, it's going to be a positive influence on their future. Uh, they're going to um, uh, make use of it for many, many more years to come. From a Christian point of view, I feel like it's uh, one of my uh, outlets for uh, in the mission area of my life, and um, it's it's. Uh, it appeases uh, my, it satisfies my soul, I guess, and, and makes me feel like I've achieved something positive in, in uh, my Christian life. I mean, it was a very well organised trip from you know beginning to end, and um, you know, everything just really seemed to fall into place. And I, I, I look at that, I think God's hand was all over it because you know there were some hurdles in the beginning with getting the, uh, the materials and the shipping container and, and all that sort of stuff, but. It just all seemed to happen like that. I just think it was, it was just a magnificent situation all around. For me personally, I mean, it's, it's, it was, to coin a phrase, it was a life-changing experience. It's made me see um, the, the needs that are out there and, and the effect that, that we can have in situations um, that really do play into what we are supposed to be as Christians. The only other last and final comment I would have is I can't wait for the next trip. I'm looking forward to, to what we have to do next. And, you know, there's a lot of needs that still need to be met. And, uh, and I can see us being involved over there for a, for a very long period of time.